In this video, we're going to examine the derivation of the modified slope deflection equations. So the slope deflection equations require us to solve equations for the unknown displacements and rotations in the case of beams and frames. And we encounter situations such as that drawn where at the end we come to a pin-ended structural member where we know that we have no moment. We still have some rotation. So let's maybe draw uh, a guess of a, the deflected shape maybe and something's happening with the loading but the deflected shape is like this. So just at the end we're still going to have and let's call this far f for now we're still going to have a theta f in this situation but we know for definite that the moment at f pointing towards n where we're calling this end n we know that this moment is equal to zero because we're at a pin support and we can exploit this fact and reduce the number of equations we need to solve if we know that we're not interested in the value of theta f. If we're interested in the value of theta f, we can solve using the slope, normal slope deflection equations and solve for theta f. But if we can relax our requirements on the number of displacements or rotations we require, then we can speed up the solution procedure. And these are how the modified slope deflection equations themselves are derived. So let's write down the normal slope deflection equations to begin with. So we have the moment at the near end is equal to 2EI divided by L or multiplying by 2 times the rotation at the near end, theta n, plus the rotation at the far end, theta f, minus 3 delta upon L, plus the fixed end moment at the near end. And we'll do the same for the far end now. So we have the moment at the far end is equal to 2EI divided by L into brackets of 2 theta F plus theta N minus 3 delta upon L. And because we don't have to get this gradient back to zero because we're not a fixed end we have plus no fixed end moment okay so i'm going to label these equations one and two and finally one other thing i can look at with theta with mf is that this must all be equal to zero and probably a better way of writing this is by rewriting, we get rid of the MF and say zero equals two EI over R, have two feet of F, etc. Now, just solving simultaneously, what we can do is two times equation one minus equation two to solve simultaneously, and we get two moment at the near end equals 2EI over L and then taking the stuff in the brackets away we have 3 theta at the near end minus 3 delta upon L plus the fixed end moment at the near end so that's 2 times theta so 2 times the equation number one minus equation two and we can see we've got a two there and a two there 
And let's tidy that up slightly, but we get the moment at the near end is equal to, and we'll take these threes outside. So three E I divided by L brackets, theta N minus delta upon L, the chord rotation, plus the fixed end moment at the near end and I'm going to put a little dash there. The fixed end moment changes because we don't have fixed end moments at both ends. So actually the, the value kind of gets relaxed a little bit. So what this means is we require modified fixed end moments. And we can apply these equations now to any examples where we have a pin at the end of our structures. So as a couple of examples where we could do that is imagine we have a beam like so, and we could have multiple sections to this beam, but here we would use the slope deflection equations because there is a moment, so let A, B, C, there's a moment at A and a moment at B. And here we know that the moment at C equals zero. So for this section, we can use the modified slope deflection equations. Same situation applies when we look at frame structures. So we might have frame structure. We come across these all the time. Maybe we've got a lateral loading on this frame structure. And if we treat each of the columns and beams, so A, B is one member, B, C is another member, and C, D is another member. If D is a pinned joint, then we can use the modified equations for M, C equals modified, because we know that M, D is equal to zero. Now, one bit to be really careful about is if you were to do qualitative analysis and understand how this structure deforms, so this would be something like this kind of idea. Maybe. The big thing to notice is there is still a rotation theta d. So don't forget that theta d still exists. It's not equal to zero. I see this used quite a lot of times in exam papers. Theta d is not zero. The moment of d is zero. And we, we can, if we need to, recalculate theta d, but generally we can reduce our number of equations, especially if we have a larger structure. We're not just removing one equation, we're removing multiple equations by getting rid of these rotations that are still there, but we don't necessarily want them. Okay, so we're going to go on next to do a tutorial problem, including the use of these modified slope deflection equations.